it all seems so familiar to us these days, doesn't it? We're all familiar with the concept of evolution and natural selection, survival of the fittest. But at the time that Darwin came up with the idea, it was quite revolutionary. What, what was it that set him on the path of, of thinking about these things and coming up with these ideas? Darwin, as a very young man, uh, was, was um, destined for the church, actually. He was going to become a, a, a parson. He'd failed to become a doctor. His father wanted him to become a doctor, and having failed on that because he couldn't stand the sight of blood, um, his father thought, well, there's only one thing he can do. He's got to go into the church. So he was sent to Cambridge to study theology. And then, most fortunately, he received an opportunity to go on HMS Beagle, which was a survey ship, uh, which was going to survey mostly the coast of South America, but that ended up going all the way around the world. And the captain, uh, Captain Fitzroy, wanted a gentleman companion to stop him from going mad. His predecessor on the Beagle had gone mad uh, and had killed himself. Um, and so Captain Fitzroy wanted a, a gentleman of his own class. And so he, um, he advertised and Darwin got the job. And this was the turning point for Darwin because Darwin went on the Beagle. He suddenly saw Amazonian rainforests. He saw fossils. Um, he saw islands. And he noticed all sorts of things which were be beginning to ferment in his mind. He noticed that on islands off the coast of South America, for example, the Galapagos Islands, the animals and plants there were obviously related to mainland South American ones, but they were a bit different. And different islands had different forms on them. And this started to bubble away in Darwin's mind. In other parts of South America, he found fossils. He discovered a number of gigantic, extinct fossil creatures. Some of them in museums are actually Darwin's own specimens. He also, a very big influence on him was that he took with him on the Beagle the, the book on geology by Charles Lyell, the great geologist of the time. And Lyell was putting forward the notion, which was quite strange, as you say, Paul, it was, it was not familiar to people in those days, that the Earth was extremely old. And Lyell also was advocating the view that in order to understand the way the past is, you study the present, you study the processes that are ever so slowly going on during our own time, erosion, things like that. And you extrapolate back and you explain the way the Earth is formed by assuming that over gigantic eras of time, these same forces were going on. So Darwin was prepared by reading Lyell to understand that the Earth was very, very ancient, which not that many people did at the time. However, he didn't actually tumble to his theory while, while on the voyage of the Beagle. That, that came later. Well, quite, quite a lot later, really, wasn't it? Because he then he returned to England and sort of vanished, I, I get the impression. He wasn't really heard of again until 1859 with the publication of Origin. What, what took him so long? Yes. It was not quite true he wasn't heard of again, but it, it is true that he waited an awful long time uh, before publishing the Origin in, in 1859. He, he was a distinguished scientist. He was elected to the Royal Society. He was a fellow of the Royal, Royal Geographical Society and other learned societies. He was, he was a well-known scientist uh, because of the, um, well, the specimens that he brought back from the Beagle, his, his book about the voyage of the Beagle made him famous. However, it is true that he sat on his theory, he first thought of it, in the, got it really right, I mean, got it really complete in his mind in the early 1840s. And then, so he waited, not quite 20 years, but getting on for 20 years before he, uh, he went public. Um, part of that time he spent, I think it was 11 years, he spent studying the taxonomy of barnacles, highly specialized zoological work. All the time he was sitting on this powder keg of a theory. I find it astonishing that he wasn't afraid of being scooped uh, mm. because it's such a simple idea and such an immensely powerful one that you'd think that he'd have been worried about somebody else 
coming up with it, as indeed they eventually did indeed. in 1858, mm -hmm. Al Alfred Russell Wallace did.